Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course Power Plant System Engineering module number 3. This is the new module that we are going to start after taking the discussions on steam power system. So, in this module number 3, we will emphasize on another kind of technique or technology to generate power. So, that is gas turbines and combined power system. So, basically in this module we will try to emphasize that same combustion process if you can do another technology or another method what is the possibility that we can have. One possibility is that we can have based on gas turbines system is that uh, it can serve for power generations as well as for thrust generations. In fact, gas turbines is the backbone of aircraft industries because they generate thrust through this gas turbine technology. So, our module will emphasize on two different themes. One is gas turbines for production of power, other is gas turbines for production of thrust. So, let us uh, start this uh, first lecture. So, in this lecture we will touch upon fundamentals of gas turbine systems and here we will try to emphasize on gas turbine cycles, various gas turbine cycles that are possible with their possibilities. Then one important thing is that for gas turbines reference cycle, we take it as a Brayton cycles. For example, for steam power systems, the reference cycle was ideal Rankine, Rankine cycle. So, similarly and that was treated as steam power cycle and for um, gas turbines, the, the corresponding ideal cycle or uh, reference cycle is the Brayton cycles. Then subsequently, we can analyze its thermodynamic aspects uh, to know that what is the uh, work output and power uh, and efficient uh, work output power developed and subsequently efficiency of the cycles. Also we will touch upon the possible working fluids that can be used for gas turbine systems. So, just to give the brief introduction of gas turbine cycles. So, gas turbines uh, provide wide range of services for mainly for industrial plants for uh, driving mechanical devices like pumps, compressors, electric generators and they are also they have also capability of producing electric power for peak load requirements. Normally whenever the steam power fails additional power can be supplied through gas turbines and uh, that that is uh, uh, that enhances the peak load requirement. Also other application of uh, gas turbines that normally steams power plants do not have is the thrust generations. So, all aircraft engines are powered by this gas turbine technology and they are mainly used for thrust generations. Now, apart from that additional advantage of this gas turbine units is that they are used as a combined cycle plants. That means, in combination with steam turbines, regenerators, heat recovery boilers, there are various augmentation techniques that steam turbines can be combined with gas turbine technology for a combined cycle power generations. Many a times we also call this as a co-generations. With this background, let us see that some of the advantage of gas turbine plants is that they are small in size, requires less mass, low initial cost per unit power. They are available for uh, with short delivery times. That means you don't uh, once you start this in engine, then it uh, within quick time we, it can start. And also it has a smooth running as compared to um, uh, steam system. They have compatibility with wide range of uh, liquids and gaseous fuels, synthetic fuels. They have flexibility for the supply of process needs. That means uh, in a gas turbine units, we normally compress the uh, compressor is used for, for compressing the air, but uh, if for process needs wherever it is required that high pressure uh, air requirement is there, then we can tap this compressed air for its use. And also, these gas turbine plants have very less environmental restrictions. 
But however, there are apart from this advantage there are some disadvantages as well because they have difficulties in primary base load prime movers. That means, uh, although they can be used uh, safely for augmentation plant or supplying the extra energy, but primary requirement uh, you cannot have uh, this gas turbine unit because the starting torque is normally less. So, they are incompatible with solid fuels, but and uh, they are only suitable for peak load requirements. They have lower efficiency compared to steam power plants, but if you want to improve the efficiency it requires some boosting that means initial gas temperature needs to be higher. So, that has to be achieved uh, and that, that needs an extra cost. So, these are the some of the disadvantages, but however gas turbine technology is a very useful technology and uh, it has been commonly used in many uh, uh, applications and main applications that happens here is that most of the marine engines also are driven by the gas turbine plants because for production power. Aircraft engines they require the gas turbine technology for thrust generations. Side by side uh, steam um, power systems requires gas turbine units for, for its operation in combined mode which can um, produce the peak load requirements. So, these are the some of the themes or advantages that gas turbine systems have. So, now let us try to understand the thermal circuits for a gas turbine cycles. The first category of uh, first type of uh, configurations that we can have this gas turbine uh, can have single shaft requirement or single shaft configurations or it can have two shaft configuration. These are the two possibilities normally gas turbines operates. So, let us try to understand uh, what these two things means. Normally, if you look at a gas turbine units, there is a uh, four uh, uh, basic component. One is compressor, second is turbines, third is combustion chamber and there is a shaft, fourth one is the shaft. So, what happens that air enters to the compressors at state 1 and normally it is atmospheric air. Now, after compressions it enters into the combustion chamber that is a state 2 and this in this combustion chamber normally we add fuel. So, when we have the fuel this is similar to uh, IC engines where fuel and air mixture fuel plus compressed air gets com combusted and this from these uh, things we get the exhaust uh, we, we get the combustion products at state 3. So, this combustion products expands in the turbines and exhaust comes at state 4. So, basically speaking that uh, and the power is getting developed by these turbines. Uh, so, what happens is that here the turbine has two roles to play one is it can give the uh, load requirement for the plant. Second is this turbine also drives this compressor through the shaft. So, ideally speaking the turbine uh, speed and compressor should uh, speed should match so that single shaft can be connected. And the at the same rate, we also uh, the turbine also produces the power. So, power development that comes from the turbine and compressor takes the work input. So, part of this turbine work goes to compressors to drive it, and rest of the things balance part that is WT minus WC is your resultant power that is being produced. So, this is what the single shaft arrangement needs to have and it is a why we call as a direct open cycle because both the sides like inlet and exhaust they are atmospheric in nature there is no additional or secondary fluid comes into picture. But in two shaft arrangement the process remains same as it is air enters at state 1 after compression it leaves at state 2 
after uh, com uh, and in the combustion chamber fuel plus air gets added. So, fuel gets added to the high compressed air. So, it leaves at state 3. Now, here we have the changes. First is we have a low pressure, we have a high pressure turbines and this high pressure turbine produces power just to drive the compressor. So, we have W T 1 and W T 2 that is two turbines that is uh, let us say W T 1 means I will say W H P and W L P low pressure turbine. So, low high pressure turbine drives the compressors. So, if I say total power from the turbine is W H uh, H P plus W L P and this W H P high pressure turbine is equal to W C that means compressor power requirement is achieved through this high pressure turbine and uh, and this further after expansion expansion is not still complete we take, take out this air um, take out this combustion products and further expand in another turbines so essentially the uh, outside load requirement is achieved through uh, low pressure turbines so advantage for this things is the that uh, here in the uh, in the single shaft arrangement uh, the we cannot run the systems at varied load but here in a two shaft arrangement since the two shafts are decoupled to each other that means uh, only compressor and high pressure turbines are can run at same rpm but whereas the turbine connected for load requirement that can he, it can run at different rpm so this gives this is this allows the loads to be driven at vari variable speeds so this is the single shaft and two shaft arrangements and we call both of them as direct open gas turbine cycle now this also have uh, another choice point i need to emphasize here uh, that in this figure what we have shown here these gas turbines are used for power generations, but uh, there are possibilities that this uh, instead of getting power through turbines, the exhaust gas can also expand further in a nozzle for thrust generations. That is essentially happens in an aircraft engines. So the useful power uh, can be supplied by the turbines or allowing the gas to expand further in a nozzle that can provide propulsion or thrust for this aircraft engines this is the another advantage of a of the gas turbine systems in fact all aircraft engines rely on gas turbine units so gas turbine technology is the backbone for aircraft uh, systems and again uh, we call this as open cycle and because we ten, you need to rely on atmosphere uh, atmospheric air which continuously stay, is taken and for since we are dependent on atmosphere air is the only feasible choice now this is about uh, op direct open gas turbine cycles another thermal circuit possibilities can have we can have indirect open gas turbine cycle the word indirect is being used is that we uh, here we do not have a combustion chamber rather we have a heat exchanger and what does this heat exchanger does is that normally these things are used when we when the gas turbine technology used, is used in the combined uh, uh, power plant board so what we have is that somewhere we are having another kind of working fluid and we call this as a coolant and this is and this is which is being produced uh, from any other reacting systems so he so the after comp so initially air which is taken from the atmosphere is enters in the compressor as state 1 it after compression it goes to state 2 now instead of air getting combusted it takes heat from uh, it takes heat 
uh, from uh, another medium or another working fluid and normally you call this as a um, secondary fluid or coolant for this cycle and there it only takes the heat. So, thereby it becomes a high pressure air and high, high pressure and high temperature air and that allows that enters into the turbine then expands. So, the load requirement is again same W T and here W C is the compressor work. So, difference between them is the uh, uh, work that is getting produced W T minus W C, but uh, here only the difference is that we uh, the air and the, the, pri the primary fluid and the secondary fluid they do not mix each other only heat is getting tapped. So, this is what the indirect open gas turbine cycles. So, the word uh, open means atmospheric we rely on atmospheric air. The word uh, indirect means indirect means it is air is not used directly rather uh, heat is taken uh, to the air from the another fluid. The uh, next thermal circuit arrangement is direct close uh, gas turbine cycle. So, it is a direct close uh, gas turbine cycle means we have a reactor. Of course, this reactor can be interpreted as uh, combustion chamber as well. So, in this case, so it is a direct close gas turbine cycles. What happens is that where uh, we have air plus fuel which are mixed in this reactor and this compressor and turbine have single shaft and the turbine drives the compressor as well as it produces the power. But extra change that we have here, we do not rely on atmospheric air. So, basically the here we do not uh, here we have choices is that we can instead of air here we can a possible choice of uh, gas gases any other gases that can continuously be circulated in this cycles. So, let us say take we say there is some gas enters in the compressor after compression it goes to state 2 it enters to a reactor where basically this reactor here I use the word reactor instead of combustion chamber is the heat addition that, that takes place. Then after heat additions this high pressure and high temperature gas enters to the turbine at state 3 and after expansion the exhaust gas the gas comes out from the turbine, but here instead of going out atmosphere the same gas gets recirculated. So, the piping arrangements are different for one for the working fluid circuit other for the rest of the components in the circuit. So, this is what we call this as a direct closed gas turbine cycles and next and most important arrangement that we are going to discuss uh, in our cycle is the Breton cycle. What it does it say it is an indirect closed cycle closed gas turbine cycle. So, what we take? We take the techniques or thermal circuits from a direct closed gas turbine cycle and op indirect open gas turbine cycles combine them then we get this indirect closed gas turbine cycles. So, what it does is, is that and the indirect gas turbine cycle combines the indirect open cycle with direct closed cycle, so that the reactor is separated from the working fluid by a heat exchanger and the working gas rejects heat to the atmosphere via heat exchangers. So, we have one working fluids which revolves in this circuit, another working fluid uh, we have in this reactor circuits. So, basically two different uh, working fluids and they do not mix each other. And this is what the most efficient gas turbine cycle we can have and main advantage for this is that 
it is mainly used for power generations. Other advantage is that uh, we are not supposed to rely on one particular gas, we can have multiple possibilities of gas to optimize the um, power and efficiency requirement. And this is what we call as a Breton cycles. So, the indirect closed gas turbine cycle is the benchmark or analysis part for a Breton cycles. So, the ideal cycle for a gas turbine power output is the Breton cycle. It composed of you can see here we have state 1 where gas enters after compression the gas comes out. So, this process is called as compression process that is from 1 to 2. So, here pressure shoots up and it is an isentropic process. Then from 2 to 3 it enters to a heat exchanger where heat is getting added to the uh, to the gas and that is we say Q in. So, Q in is the process 2 3. So, it is a heat addition process at constant pressure and here we have uh, here we have compressor that is takes W C. Then after heat addition process the gas enters to the turbine for expansions. So, heat addition process is constant pressure process. Now, in, in the turbine process is denoted by 3, 3, 4 and this process is isentropic process const, that is constant entropy process that is in the turbine and again finally, heat rejection process that takes place at constant pressure. So, effective work that we get is from expansion and in the turbine and heat addition process that takes place is Q in that is from in the in the heat exchanger. So, this is the uh, very basic bottom line for a and for an ideal Breton cycle. And here the components are treated to run as a steady flow manner with negligible kinetic energy, change in the kinetic energy and work done is so that the work done from the turbine is equal to change in the enthalpy. So, you uh, now uh, here we need to do some assumptions when you say the gas that continuously enters in the compressor and turbines that uh, specific heat for the gas should be uh, assumed to be constant for the range of operations that we are looking at. So, with constant specific heat assumptions the analysis becomes a simple air standard cycle with the air as working fluid. Further, we need to uh, do this thermodynamic analysis. For this thermodynamic analysis, let us refer to this pressure volume and temperature entropy diagrams. Process 1 to uh, process 1 to 2 is compressions, which is W C work enters. Process 2 to 3 is constant pressure heat addition, 3 to 4 is expansion in the turbine, 4 to 1 is heat rejection Q out. So, this is what we see in the pre pressure volume diagram. Similarly, 1 to 2 is isentropic process in the compressor, 2 to 3 is the heat addition process in the uh, combustion chamber, 3 to 4 is the expansion process in the turbine and 4 to 1 is the heat rejection process at constant pressure. So, with this analysis uh, we can recall some of the fundamental parameters. First thing we have to say uh, or define the pressure ratio for the turbine that means, what is the range of pressure it should work that is we define a term which is called as pressure ratio for turbines. 
there are possibilities pressure ratio in the compression and turbine they may not they may or may not be equal but however for our analysis we'll say that since the compressor is driven by the turbine so we say that uh, the pressure ratio we need to remain same and second for isentropic expressions we can have the temperature ratios can be expressed in this uh, pressure ratio then we can by using this pressure volume and temperature di entropy diagrams we can calculate what is the uh, the work that is done in the turbine m times cp t3 minus t4 because the enthalpy since it is a gas mode and gas when you say gas mode we can write enthalpy as cp times t so it's a enthalpy is a function of temperatures so we can arrive at work done uh, from the turbines and subsequently this can be ref, uh, uh, this can be interpreted in terms of pressure ratio now one uh, important expression that i need to emphasize here work done in the turbines is m dot cp times t3 into 1 minus 1 by rp to the power k minus 1 by k here k stands as the specific risk ratio that is cp by cv and r is equal to characteristics gas constant that is cp minus cv but one thing i need to emphasize here that power developed from the turbine is depends on the maximum cycle temperatures so in this uh, diagram if you see t3 is the t max so higher you go to the maximum temperature power requirement will be high and second thing it also depends on the pressure ratio now the uh, if you can make this if you can go for higher pressure ratio also um, power we can develop is more in the similar analogy we can also find that what is the work that is to be given for the compressor so that also we can find out that is m times cp into t2 so t2 is the temperature of the gas that comes out after the compression so after so we have work done in the turbine work done for the compressors then uh, we can find out the net work done for the cycles w net is equal to wt minus wc and we also can have heat added to the cycles it is uh, uh, two three process that is cp m dot cp times t3 minus t2 and uh, from noting down the network and q uh, qa that is heat added we can define this uh, thermal efficiency for the cycles so the thermal efficiency we can arrive at is that it is uh, the given by 1 minus 1 by rp to the power k minus 1 by k now further the network is also written uh, in uh, since here we have expressions are t3 and t2 so it is uh, and t2 is an intermediate number which normally we do not uh, know so what we normally know is the what is the minimum temperature and maximum temperatures so t3 is your t max and t1 is your t min so an idealistic way of or uh, most uh, effective way of representing network is in terms of t3 and t1 which is the highest and the lowest temperature of the cycle and also pressure ratio is the another role that needs to be accounted so basically network is a function of maximum temperature maximum temperature t3 minimum temperature t1 and pressure ratio additionally it also depends on the working fluid so that is the function of cp so the characteristics of working fluid comes into here he with respect to k that is specific heat ratio and cp these two numbers is very vital for the choice of the gas which is being used in as a working fluid so with this we'll try to emphasize what are the different inferences that we get out so basically whatever expressions we have done so far and uh, if we can just uh, plot them graphically we try this curve because 
uh, we have parameters like pressure ratio, maximum temperature, minimum temperatures, then we have working fluid. So, based on this we can find the curve for efficiency and specific work. So, if you keep on doing it the curves will normally looks like this. So, what uh, inference that we get out of it is that first is on thermal efficiency of the working uh, of the cycle for a given working fluid that is constant C p and uh, specific heat ratio it increases uh, asymptotically. So, basically if from this curve the with common x axis that is pressure ratio efficiency is plotted here. So, this is plotted for uh, air as well as helium it is plotted and this dotted line refers for efficiency curve and solid line refers for the specific work. So, if you look at dotted line and that is for efficiency curve we can see that helium is always happens to have more efficient than air as working fluid and this curve continuously increases and in fact it does not depend on the cycle temperatures you can see here in this expressions just keep on increasing for a given value of k just keep on increasing r p will have this efficiency curve. Then second inference if we will look into it is the specific work. Now, when you look at the specific work using this expressions we find is that specific work initially it keeps on increasing and one particular point it starts dropping that means, if you keep on increasing the pressure ratio after some point of the pressure ratio the work output comes down. And here and this is true as for helium, helium as well as air. Now, compared to the helium and air you see that helium will have high value of C p and k. So, because of this reasons and in fact, it is uh, since is C p value is almost 5 times more if you can see peak power for helium is almost more than 5 times. So, this is the advantage, but however, the way it rises it also falls suddenly. Uh, so, that means, uh, we have the possibility that means, if you have a choice of air and helium it is better to choose the helium as working fluid, because at a given pressure ratio the helium will have a higher capability of producing work that we can see here that means, if you see if you, this particular plot temperature entropy diagram shows effect of pressure ratio in the Brayton cycles. So, basically T 3 is the maximum temperature that means, the turbine supporting systems or metallurgical requirement blades that we need to be operated. So, that is fixed by maximum temperatures. Now, when we have minimum temperature that is fixed by the atmospheric conditions. So, within this maximum temperature and minimum pressures there can be any a number of Brayton cycles one uh, which is one with much wider other is with um, like uh, like abscess and ordinates, ordinates value may be different, but the the curve for the work output shows that uh, the in we have either whatever working fluid we have air or helium that is an initial rise and then followed by a peak work then it has to come down. So, this is uh, this is the uh, choice uh, this this particular um, T H diagram shows here is that there are three cycles cycle 1, cycle 2 and cycle 3 and cycle 1 has a wider range and cycle 2 will have smaller range. So, but what we can have we will get the optimum work in the cycle 2 only. So, so basically basically this is true because we want to operate the cycle only for an max for a maximum power for which the pressure ratio is optimum. So, that is the reasons we normally operate the gas turbine cycles for maximum power and that maximum power can be obtained 
by differentiating with respect to pressure ratio and it turns out to be a conditions like T 2 is equal to T 1 into T 2 the T 3 to the power half. So, based on this we arrive at the expressions for optimum power ratio R p optimum which is a function of uh, maximum temperature and minimum temperatures to the power k by 2 i into k minus 1. So, very basic summary is that use of working fluid in a gas turbine unit uh, or the choice of working fluid in the gas turbine unit is to design the cycle or the design this uh, Breton cycle in such a way it should produce maximum power and for that maximum power we have to use this optimum conditions of pressure ratio. So, that is the advantage that uh, in fact for other uh, pressure ratios the power can be all uh, the cycle can be operated, but the better approach is to choose a working fluid which has more capability in terms of specific heat and uh, specific heat ratio. So, these uh, things I have already explained is that at same value of temperature limits pressure ratio and specific heat ratio uh, pressure ratio and specific heat ratio the net specific work is directly function of specific heat net specific work is a direct function of specific heat which means helium can produce 5 times higher power than that of air. Similarly, for same values of temperature limits pressure ratio specific uh, heat working fluid with higher values of specific heat ratio have advantage of producing more specific work. So, there we have this ratio that is R p pi to the power k minus 1 by k. So, this ratio plays a very vital term because specific heat ratio for helium is higher. Another um, point that need to emphasize in terms of working fluid, uh, we have already only told about air and helium. Then what are the other possibilities? Other possibilities can have, so air and helium normally we say helium is a monoatomic gas, air is a diatomic gas, air or nitrogen can be diatomic gas. So, we can also have triatomic gas. So, there are possibilities that we can have multiple type different types of gas that can work in the Breton cycle. But what happens is that when we use monoatomic gas like helium in this case obviously, for a given pressure ratio let us say I take this pressure ratio as 4 at this pressure ratio uh, your with air as working fluid it can produce closely uh, about 350 kilo joule per kg of work, but at same pressure helium has the capability to produce closely 2800 kilo joule of per kg work. Which means, but if you want to produce with same uh, for air we have to go for higher pressure ratio. So, which means that plant size or reduction of the for the for reduction of the plant size we need to rely on monoatomic gas for a given pressure ratio because monoatomic gas has advantage of higher specific heat and also will have the will higher values of k. So, this is the background summary for the thermodynamic analysis. So, now we will rely on uh, a numerical problems which is based on the uh, working principle of an ideal Breton cycle. The question that was given here we need to find out the pressure ratio required for an ideal Breton cycle to produce net work of 1400 kilo joule per kg. And we are given with data that cycle has maximum and minimum temperature of 288 and Kelvin and 1380 Kelvin. We also need to find out optimum pressure ratio and maximum work. So, we have given the choice of uh, working fluid with helium and air. To solve the problem, 
So, first thing we need to do is to draw this pressure volume and temperature entropy diagram. So, that is 1 to 2 compression One to two is the compression, two to three is the combustion, three to four is the expansion, and in the turbine four to one is the heat rejection. And in these temperature entropy diagrams, the cycle can be drawn in this manner like one, two, three, four. So, here we say S is equal to constant that is entropy is constant here pressure is equal to constant. So, basically we have Q in and we have W c that enters into the system W dot c w dot t that is power that is being produced. So, with this notations the data that is given is that T 1 is 288 Kelvin, T 3 is equal to 1380 Kelvin and we are Suppose to produ we produce this much power W net that is 1400 kilojoule per kg and working fluid that is we have air and we have helium. So, first thing let us start that working fluid. if you take helium, if you take working fluid helium and try to find out the optimum pressure and maximum work, then we, we note down this value specific heat ratio for helium is 1.66 uh, specific heat ratio and C p value is 5.2 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. And we also know that the expression for R p optimum that is equal to T 3 by T 1 to the power k by k in twice into k minus 1. So, with this data uh, T 3 and T 1 uh, then we can find out R p optimum value for helium is 6.6 .6 by inserting T 3 T 1 K. So, and for these things we have to now write down what is this W dot n by m dot that is maximum power that is C p times T 1 1 minus R p to the power k minus 1 by k plus T 3 into 1 minus 1 by R p to the power k minus 1 by k. So, you have all the numbers here C p 5.2 T 1 288 R p optimum that is 6.6 .6, T 3 1380. So, uh, this will give you W dot n by W uh, m dot maximum. So, this value is 3 to 4 2.5 kilo joule per kg. So, this answer gives you the fact that with uh, we can 
use helium as working fluid with this optimum pressure ratio it can max give maximum power is 34 24.5 kilojoule per kg so this two answer we got it but our requirement is that we need to uh, produce 1400 kilojoule per kg then why uh, then uh, then what pressure ratio we should have so uh, again for that region for that answer if i put w dot n by uh, m dot as 1400 and putting uh, and calculating find rp so to do that we can write this expression that is 5.2 that is cp t1 is 288 into 1 minus 1 by rp note that here rp is unknown rp to the power k minus 1 by k plus t3 here k minus 1 is 1.66 minus 1 by 1.66 t3 1380 into 1 minus 1 by rp to the power 1.66 minus 1 by 1.66 and if you take that as 1400 then find rp by iterative process so to start this iterative process we use different values of rp but initial choice for this rp is that we all know that for rp of 6.6 .6, your w net is 3242.5 so but our uh, requirement for w dot n uh, by m dot w net is 1400 so if you keep some values which is lesser than 6.6 .6 and keep drive finding whether left hand side expression matches with the right hand side that is 1400 and then that will be your answer so so this will give you by iterative process if you keep on iterating and rp will be approximately 2.2 so the pressure ratio required for helium is 2.2 now uh, same thing if i try for air for air we say cp is 1.005 kilojoule per kg kelvin k is equal to 1.4 we can arrive at rp optimum is equal to t3 by t1 to the power k into twice k minus 1 1380 divided by 288 to the power 1.75 so this number is 4.77 now at this optimum pressure ratio w dot n by m dot we can find out that is equal to 1.005 into 288 1 minus rp to the power k minus 1 by k plus 1380 into 1 minus 1 by rp to the power k minus 1 by k take this rp is equal to rp optimum 4.77 and we arrive at w dot n by m dot is equal to 
335.8 kilojoule per kg. So, here we need to have important inference here with helium as working fluid and when you operate this cycle with a optimum pressure ratio of 4.77, we can have maximum power of 335.8 kilojoule per kg. That means, air cannot produce 1400 kilojoule per kg. So, for this problem the option of air is ruled out. So, we must use helium as working fluid at a pressure ratio of 2.2. So, this particular things we can also verify graphically if you look at in this graph for a pressure ratio of uh, 4.77 somewhere here close to 5 the possible value of specific work we can drop down which is close to 335 and there is no possibilities that with air we can have specific work beyond uh, this value that is 500. But with helium with this ratio of 2.2 we can easily go up to 1400. So, this is cross verified. Uh, from this graphs. So, this is all about for the lecture today. Thank you for your attention.